Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson. Uh, this is for Eureka Math, grade five, at module four, lesson nine, homework. And we have a little jump. As I mentioned in the problem set video, we're gonna do conversions. So we're kind of jumping around a little bit. The objective here is to find a fraction of a measurement and solve word problems. So a fraction of a measurement is going to be a conversion. And we don't worry, we have a process for this. Go watch the problem set video so you can see what the steps are. I'm just going to go through them very quickly because this is the homework video and you should already know what you're doing. So uh, the first one, it says convert, show your work using a tape diagram or magic word an equation. Now I'm not a super big fan of always drawing everything and I love these equations so I'm going to heavily use the equation. First one's done for you. You can see them both ways. Uh, if you want to make a tape diagram, help yourself. It is an excellent way to show these conversions. So um, the first one's all done but the second one is not quite finished. So we're gonna hop right in here, one sixth of a foot equals how many inches. Remember the process is to copy the amount that we have and then multiply by one of the unit that we are converting from. So I call this the old unit, one of the old unit. Then we're gonna copy the number again and multiply by the amount that is equivalent of the old unit in the new unit right here. This is where the change is gonna take place, okay? So you're going one of the old and the equivalent of the new, and that again is in the notes. Then for uh, the next step, you would have your equation here, and uh, you can write it out like a one times 12 over six, knowing that the commutative property can shift the six from under the one to under the 12. Then you have 12 divided by six, which makes two, which means one times two is two. And so one sixth of a foot is two inches. So they're talking about this right here. What you wanna do if you do have a tape diagram is add up your numbers. If you put two here, then every piece is two, and you should be able to skip count and go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and see that what you put here actually does repeat and add up to the top. So that's kind of important, and that's your final answer here. Oh yeah, if you're not a subscriber, click subscribe and come back. It's so easy. Just click the little subscribe button. All right, next one. Three-fourths of a year equals how many months? We're going to use our formula copy the number that we're trying to change, multiply it by one of the old unit or the old label. Take that same number and multiply this amount, one year, by the equivalent of your new label. So one year is equal to how many months? 12 months. You should know these things. Um, some things they will not have as reference on like different tests, so you should just know that one year is 12 months. Take that and write it into a fraction equation. And remember that the four can commute under either number. We can't move it up because it is the denominator, that's the label, that's the number of pieces. But we can move it over back and forth. And so 12 fourths is equal to three and then you have three times three, put your new label. It's very important that you label everything correctly. The whole point is to have an answer with a new label. So three fourths of a year is equal to nine months. You can fill it in there, you can circle it down here, that's fine. Whatever your teacher wants, I don't mind, just circle it. All right, so three fifths of a meter is gonna be times one meter. And I would get three fifths meter if I multiplied three fifths times one. That's why that works right there as the first step. Then we're going to convert right here. One meter is equal to how many centimeters? Gotta know that, use your reference sheet um, that is in the problem set book. And I think I mentioned in the problem set video what page that is on. So go back and again, good reason to watch that. 
Now when you have 3 times 100 over 5, you might recognize that 100 and 5 are compatible, and so you could divide 100 by 5 and get 20. And then you would have 3 times 20 for 60. And that's your equivalent. And again, you don't have to write the number on the left-hand side. You don't have to keep writing it over and over. We've got the equivalent, and you can write it in your blank. Next one, 5 twelfths hour, 5 twelfths times 1 hour makes 5 twelfths of an hour. 5 twelfths, write it again and multiply by the equivalent of the new unit, 60 minutes is 1 hour. Rewrite your statement 5 times 60 over 12. Know your facts know what numbers go together. You could always start with two. They're both even if you wanted to simplify, but I know that 12 times five is 60. So that gives me five times five, and my new label would be minutes. 25 minutes is the equivalent of five twelfths of an hour. Last one here in the box. 2 thirds copy that times one of the old unit, 2 thirds copy again times the equivalent of the new, one yard. That's not feet, that's three feet, so it's going to be 36 inches. 2 times 36 over 3, move the 3 over and notice that both of those are evenly divisible. That would be 12, and then 2 times 12 is 24, new label, there you go. At the bottom, Michelle measured the length of her forearm. Her forearm is her forearm, it's from your wrist to your elbow. And it was 3 fourths of a foot. How long is her forearm in inches? We're just taking this amount, 3 fourths of a foot and saying, how many inches is that? So you use the strategy and the formula again, and you just do the steps times one of the old, copy it times the equivalent of the new, and then down here so that it, you can actually see it. I'll do it up here. 3 times 12 over 4, shifting the 4 over 12 fourths is equal to 3, and then multiply and get 9 with your new label. Her forearm is 9 inches. Okay. All right, making progress. Hopefully you did really well on that. Again, this should already be done. If you don't want to do it now with me, you want to try to do it before. Pause the video. If it's not done, don't just copy. You're only cheating yourselves, really, at this point. Okay, at the market, Ms. Wynn bought three-fourths pound of grapes and five-eighths pound of cherries. How many ounces of grapes did Ms. Wynn buy? So we're going to change to ounces, and we're only going to focus on the grapes here. 3 fourths pound equals how many ounces? Remember that pounds has a weird um, abbreviation. P-O-U-N-D-S doesn't have L-B, but that's what the abbreviation is. And ounces is O-Z, so that's what I mean there. So you're going to do 3 fourths times 1 pound L-B. And then the equivalent, which you should know, but a lot of people forget, that 16 ounces equal a pound. And so that's your equivalent. This is where the change happens. I gotta write it up here because we're out of room. Three times 16 over four, and this is gonna be our new amount in ounces. But notice that 16 fourths is divisible both by four. 16 fourths is four. And so that would give us 12 ounces, and that's gonna be grapes. So the next one is how many ounces of cherries? So we're going to take this amount here using the prompt at the top for part B. 
5 eighths pound equals how many ounces? Do the same process again. 5 eighths times one of the old unit. 5 eighths times the equivalent of the new. Again, 16 ounces. Yes, they want you to do it over and over so you will remember it. Rewrite 5 times 16 over 8 this time. And then uh, 16 eighths is equal to 2. And so we have 5 times 2 for 10 ounces. And that's cherries. Now, how many more ounces of grapes than cherries did Ms. Wynn buy? That's just comparison. How many more of this than that? Look at the T-H-A-N. Point that out because it's not T-H-E-N. That's like consecutive and timing. But T-H-A-N is comparison. That usually means you have to subtract. So we've got our 12 minus 10. And the quick, easy answer is 2 ounces more. Grapes than T-H-A-N cherries. Okay. And then we've got part D. We're going to bring in Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips bought one and three-fourths pounds of raspberries. Who bought more fruit? Remember, look at the labels. We've got grapes, cherries, raspberries, and now we have fruit, so that's going to encompass everything. Who bought more fruit, Ms. Wynn or Mr. Phillips? And then how many ounces more? Be specific. So let's check out Mr. Phillips. If you've got one and three-fourths pounds, if you made a tape diagram just to understand what we're doing, if I have one pound, that's equal to 16 ounces. And we know that. Okay, so he's got a lot of raspberries. Now in the second section, he only has three out of four. So if you have a tape diagram that shows that you have three-fourths of a pound, I only need to know how much this is. I know this whole thing is 16. What I don't know is this here, okay, because I need three-fourths of 16. It's pretty easy. I know most kids can see it right away because they know what to count by. But if you use the equation like we did in previous lessons where you divide by the denominator and then take your answer and multiply by the numerator. Okay, that's going to give you that. You can also set it up with your 3 times 16 over 4 and simplify 16 fourths to 4 and get 3 times 4 for 12 ounces. A couple different ways um, to see that. Now, here is 12 ounces because what did you find? You only found part. That's this part here. But don't forget the full pound there. So you've got 16 ounces and 12 ounces, and that gives you 28 ounces of fruit, as opposed to, and that's for Mr. Phillips, as opposed to the 12 and the 10 that Ms. Wynn bought. If you have to write it, then <laughs> show your work. Okay, and so then when they ask you specifically how many, who bought more? Well, who bought more? Mr. Phillips. So write a statement. Mr. Phillips bought more. Okay, and then you're comparing 28 to 22. Again, comparison or finding a difference is a subtraction problem. Six ounces more. There you go. Okay, so um, only one more problem and then we're finished with this one. I hope this lesson was easy. I always do these and then I think, okay, this is hard, this is easy, this is hard. These are not that hard. If you, if you really pay attention in class, you should be able to get these, hopefully. All right, a gardener has 10 pounds of soil. He used five-eighths of the soil for his garden. How many pounds of soil did he use in the garden? Ten pounds. Five-eighths. It's in eighths. We need to divide it into eight sections. One, two, three, four, five. Those are for the garden. 
How many pounds of soil in the garden? Next question, how many pounds did he have left? So we've got 10 pounds here. We know what we need to do. We need to divide it by eight. By eight, so we're gonna do five eighths of 10. That can give us our how much did he use. It can be five times 10 over eight. This is again for the used portion, label carefully. When you have 10 eighths and we're not using the bottom number as a whole to divide into it, remember the strategy is to look for a common divisor. The common divisor for all even numbers can be two. There might be bigger numbers, but here there isn't. So you can divide both numbers by two, divide by two, divide by two. Eight divided by two is four, 10 divided by two is five, and that leaves us with 20 five fourths. Go back a few lessons, fractions as division. 25 fourths is if you need to set it up so you can see what your remainder is. It's going to be six, multiply, subtract, and each or this, uh, the five eighths is six and a fourth pounds that were used. Okay, so sometimes we'll find one eighth of 10 and sometimes we'll find five eighths of 10. This one was five eighths of 10, so we have our full amount. But that's what was used, that's only part of the question. The second part is to find out what was left. Now, if you want, there are a couple different strategies. Some people might say, I wanna do 10 minus six and a fourth. Don't forget that if you do 10 minus six and a fourth and get four, you still have to take away the fourth. So you would end up with three and three fourths. Another way, if you've got this, you, you could be happy with that. But another way people might say, well, I wanna do three eighths of 10. And you can solve that too, using the same strategy, dividing both by two, and then doing a long division problem, 15 divided by four, so that you can see you're gonna end up with the three and three fourths this way too. And that is for how many pounds he had left. Okay, so anyway, Lots of different strategies, people think in different ways. So I hope this was really helpful and we will see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.